In a previous screencast we saw how the airflow through an axial flow compressor can be determined. So to briefly recap, there's the air coming in, it comes across the English guide vanes at an angle to the axis of the engine. The rotator, rotating blades rotate in this direction, which means there's a relative flow in that direction, reproduced here. That gives us a result of airflow, which we see over here. And this air comes across the uh, rotor blades and it exits the compressor uh, stage uh, with a velocity and angle in that direction, which are produced here, and that's at an angle to the axis of the engine. The engine is still rotating, so there's that vector. So the combination of that vector and that vector means that the air is leaving the compressor stage with a velocity and direction as such. And that's reproduced here. And the difference between the air coming in and the air coming out is the change in the whirl speed. And that is proportional to the amount of power that the engine absorbs. We saw that we can ca calculate this change in whirl speed. If we know that angle, we can calculate the output whirl speed. And if we know that angle there, we can calculate that output whirl speed. And subtracting one from the other will give us a change in whirl speed. So to be able to calculate these, we'll need to know the quantity of that vector there, and that is the axial velocity CA. Okay, so here it is reproduced on this slide. If I'm looking at this quantity here, I can say that the tan of the angle, so tan is opposite over adjacent. So the tan is the whirl speed, the whirl speed over the axial velocity. So tan theta in is whirl speed over axial velocity, which is CA. Therefore the whirl speed is CA times tan theta in. Similarly, the uh, whirl speed on the output side is CA tan theta out. So the change in whirl speed change in velocity is therefore CA times tan theta out minus tan theta in. But a change in velocity is an acceleration and we know that force is mass by acceleration. So if I multiply this quantity here by the mass of air I will get a force. So the mass of air times CA tan theta out minus tan theta in, tells us what force is acting on the rotor blades. But work is force by distance. And we can determine the distance that the blades have moved from, from their RPM, and that will be a value u. Hence, the work done by the compressor is the mass of the air multiplied by the velocity of the blades multiplied by the axial velocity of the air, so this airflow coming in, by tan theta out minus tan theta in. And generally, this is all done over one second. So, uh, work per second, or the rate of doing work, I should say, is power. Therefore, I can say that the power absorbed by the compressor is the mass of air, u, c, a, tan theta out minus tan theta in. This equation shows that the power would be absorbed by the stage if equal amounts of work were done at all sections of the blades. In practice, the tips of the compressor blades cannot do as much work as the sections near the middle of the blades. To allow for this, it is usual to bring a work done factor, or an efficiency factor, into the power equation. Therefore, the power absorbed by the compressor stage is the mass of air times the velocity of the blades times the axial velocity of the airflow, times the y factor, or the work done factor, tan theta out minus tan theta 